Welcome to everybody and welcome to experiment number seven of the one field. So we are here with our medical care, Professor Crocto. Good evening to you also. We are located in the medical care center. We welcome everyone. אנחנו מאוד שמחים לעשות את הניסוי המדהים הזה פעם שנייה אצלנו, והפעם הזו הבאנו את המטפלים שלנו שבאמת ינדבו את גופם למדע. אז אני אספר טיפה על מה זה מדיקל סנטר ומה, על מה זה מדיקל קר ומה אנחנו עושים כאן. אנחנו מטפלים באנשים בבית חולים שיקומי לאחר מחלה קשה בפרוטוקול הרפואי הרגיל שעושים בכל בית חולים אחר בארץ ובעולם. אבל בנוסף לכך, פרוטוקול האינטגרטיבי, שזה אומר שאנחנו עובדים על החיוניות ועל הב... המקור הרגשי של המחלה, ואנחנו בעצם משתמשים בטיפולים מאוד מתקדמים, כדי בעצם להגיע לשורש של המחלה, וגם לשיעור הרוחני שמחלה בעצם מביאה איתה, כדי לפתור את המחלה לא רק מהסימפטום שלה, אלא מהשורש שלה. אמייזינג. We have a major research that we've done with 100 uh, women that had breast cancer, and uh, we, we're doing it with a medical center in Jerusalem that's called Shari Tzedek. And in this research, we uh, tested these women before they came to do our program, during the program, and after the program, to see what kind of changes they had in their vitality, in their resilience, and also even in their medical records. Wow. אז uh, מה שאנחנו עשינו, אנחנו בעצם ערכנו, ניס, uh, ערכנו uh, מחקר ביחד עם בית חולים שערי צדק, מחקר הלסינקי שבו בדקנו 100 מחלימות ממחלה סרטן, שבעצם בחנו אותם לפני הסדנה, לפני התהליך, אחרי התהליך אצלנו וחודש מה, מסיום התהליך, ומה שבדקנו בעצם זה את הוויטליטי שלהם, שזה את החיוניות של הגוף שלהם. את המצב הנפשי והרגשי שלהם, את המצב התפקודי שלהם, את מצב הכאב שלהם, ומה שראינו בריסרצ' הזה, במחקר הזה, שבעצם התוצאות של המחקר היו מדהימות והיה שיפור מדהים בכל המדדים. Very very high evidence that when you treat a person as a holistic a person and not just the medical issues, we can see that the healing process Uh, occurs in the body and we can see that all of the symptoms, the pain symptoms, the well-being of the person, the resilience, everything changes and actually the scores were rocket sky. I mean people were, the professor in the Sharet Zetek Hospital was quite amazed. It sounds uh, like. Yeah, and we also checked the effect after one month to see how they can still keep those changes. And also with that, we had very, very good results that they can keep it and maintain uh, the changes for a month after they leave this hospital. So I just want to say that the results of the research are showing that the results of the research are showing between 100 to 200 percent, which is unheard of, it's really the results of the research. We see it as a natural thing to participate in this experiment and that we were very happy to host this event tonight. So thank you very much for coming here. Thank you. Toda rabba. Thank you very much to Shauli and Michal from Medical Care. And tell me, do you know Lee Carol? Lee is probably the most famous channel in the world, isn't he? Even he channeled in the United Nations. Lee Carol is one of the, maybe you can say, the most famous, the most famous, the most famous in the world. Hello everyone, I'm Lee Carroll. And I'm Monica Marani. Today we're coming to you from our Cryon studio in what is your now time of September 21. Now September 21, this is a wonderful day that is recognized as the International Day of Peace. However, we're pre-recording this program in advance of that date. Oh, so is it live? How is it not live? How, I mean, how is this experiment going to work? Live or not live? Well, welcome to the field. I have a question for you. What is it we know about energy? Energy is neither created nor destroyed. Therefore, the 
energy of our combined intention to come together to focus on peace exists forever. That means that this live experiment began before September 21, but it also means it's occurring right now on that exact date. And yet, it's also going to occur on a future date whenever anyone connects and watches the replay. Are you confused yet? Well, to help us make sense of all of this and to learn a little bit more about the field and how we can seemingly be in two places at once, let's turn to Lee. Well, we have to talk about the field in very, um, I would say, esoteric terms, perhaps not, uh, maybe scientific, well, perhaps not. You know, when you explain the field, you're trying to explain consciousness and the attributes of consciousness. This is a brand new field. And that is why we're doing the experiments that we're doing in these years on this entire subject. You know, I'm reminded when you look up consciousness and you want to see the definition of it, even Plato <laughs> couldn't get it. It's, it's a tough one. Spiritually, we look at consciousness as the center of love, of all things. We also have realized through uh, what has gone on on this planet and the books that have been written uh, from near-death experiences and all is that consciousness even remains after death. So consciousness is a biggie. So when you start looking at what the attributes might be, it helps you understand the field. So you think this perhaps is spooky information? I want you to remember that word. I don't use it often, but somebody else has. What did you learn, all of you, about God? It doesn't matter who you are, or what your religion is, all over the planet, we have an idea about God. And one of the ones that even bothered me as a kid, bothered me in a way that was because it wasn't logical, was that when a billion people could pray, God could hear y'all all at once. All those voices at once praying and, and there was no problem. This is the first glimpse as a child that I got about the field. How could you have something happening all at once for me, and yet time obviously stopped for God because God could then dissect every single prayer and help everybody all at once. So the timing of it didn't matter. That is what we would call multidimensional energy. Now there's been a lot of research, as much as we can do, on things that are multidimensional. I think that in the last um, years, my lifetime, we brought me right into the idea there is a quantumness, I would say, about everything. Now, science started opening that door when they started looking at what I will call dimensionality. We live in four dimensions, height, width, depth, and time, time being our fourth dimension. Now, this is all going somewhere, folks, and you'll see this, and I didn't mean to just get technical right off the bat, but I want to show you that this whole idea of the field is validatable. Even before we started measuring it, there were hints of it in so many things. So, scientists are looking at dimensionality, and right off the bat, they discovered, based upon what they then define as a dimension, that there had to be at least 11. Now that's in the beginning. Now they're up to about 27, I think. But right away, there were 11 dimensions. Now again, let me rewind. How many do you know about? How many do you live in? How many are you, you know, working every day in? Four. So stop everything, stop the discussion. Back then, 11 dimensions identified, we live in four, what are the other ones? That's a big question. Is it possible, do you think, that we live in, in dimensionality that is enormous, but we're only then aware of a tiny little bit of it? That's what the scientists say. Now the next thing is this, are we able to sense it? Because that's the next argument. 
okay, the world has multi-dimensions, physics has it, but we're in four, so, so what about the other ones? I mean, why does it matter? Well, here's how it matters, because subsequent to that experiment, we now know that we are multidimensional. I think the first hint we got of that was more science. I hope you're all right with that. There was a Russian researcher named Vladimir Poponyan. And Vladimir experimented with multidimensional energies and DNA. And the way he did it was quite, quite clever, and it was many, many years ago. But what he showed in his experiments, without going through them with you, is that our DNA reacted to multidimensional sources. Now, if we were not multidimensional, nothing would have happened. But the DNA saw multidimensions, reacted to it in, in really strange ways. Now, if I told you a little more about the experiment, it would start giving you a hint about the field. The DNA didn't care when it was reacting to multidimensional fields because it stayed in its reactive form long, long after the multidimensional source was removed. In other words, it went against everything we know. The DNA was exposed to a multidimensional source. It patterned a certain way. The source was taken away. And bingo, it stayed there. And it remained there, even though there was not a source there. Now, what we teach and what you're going to see is that in this field that we're talking about, that what we do here stays here. Did you get that? Now, I'm going to get to that later. But that's the first violation, you might say, of our four-dimensional ideas. There are many violations of our four-dimensional ideas, and the field has them all. <laughs> first, let's talk about this. Something you all know about, perhaps something you've heard about. What are we seeing in, I would say, humanism that might tell you there's something going on that we don't understand? Let's go right to something that most people have heard about. Identical twins. Identical DNA. What I'm going to tell you has been validated and shown and proven over and over and over. Identical twins on separate parts of the world will have identical, I would say, intuitive flashes. The ones that I've interviewed, especially if they are love-based, emotional-based, they both have them at the same time. So you've got one twin in New York and one twin in Australia or wherever you want to say. And for instance, there's something happens and their mother's in trouble or perhaps there's a death in the family. Both of them sense it at the same time. Distance makes no difference. It just doesn't. And when they start calling each other to find out what's wrong and what happened, they'll say, oh, that's exactly when I felt it. So again, stop for a moment. What does that mean? There is some other kind of energy going on that we have seen um, all my life I've heard of this long before anybody started studying uh, multidimensionality or quantum fields, we were seeing it actually in real life. Now, what is this? It, it's an, an attribute where time doesn't make any difference and distance doesn't make any difference. I'm going to say that again because those are the basic principles that we talk about in the field, which I'm going to get to. Time is meaningless. Distance is meaningless. Both of those things were then proven when finally scientists began to study something called entanglement. Now, that's been around a long time. They, they were working on entanglement, and they had discovered it even when Einstein was alive. When Einstein first saw the results of the first entanglement experiments, I'll tell you what he said. Let me tell you about what they showed. They cut, believe it or not, a photon in half. <laughs> that's that's pretty, pretty remarkable they could even do that. And half of the photon was existing in an instrument in one part of the world, 
and half of the photon was existing and being sustained in an instrument on another part of the world, when they touched one, the other one moved. And it doesn't matter how far apart it was, it moved instantly. There was no delay. Now, what do you know about our 4D? It means anything that we have on this planet that has to do with uh, communication. I mean, at the fastest, it's going to be at the speed of light. It was faster than the speed of light. So they computed it, and they saw that. Now, that's impossible. So what they saw was all of this action at a distance in real time. Distance make no difference at all. So that was called entanglement, and Einstein, he had a statement about it. He saw it, and he said very profoundly, this is spooky action at a distance. Do you see what I'm going, where I'm going with this? This is the basis of the field. There is perhaps a multi-dimensionality around us that contains, guess what? Consciousness. That thing that we now understand is also multidimensionality. We are multidimensional beings, even though we live in only four. But our body uses the rest of it. Identical twins are human beings living in four dimensions, but communicating who knows how many. They are using entanglement. Are you interested? This is the basis. What if? What if? Consciousness could be put into that which we call the field and go everywhere at the same time, just like entanglement, by a human being. It gets better. But let's back up just another moment and talk about something we also see that is an example of the field in a very small way, a minuscule example, but we've all experimented with this or at least seen it. I would say seen it, not experimented. You walk into a room and something's wrong. And then you find out that this room has had an argument in it and the people are still standing there and they're mad. You just walked in on it. You never saw it. You didn't see they were angry, but you knew something was wrong. I think everyone has had that kind of, an, of a feeling. You walk in and you go, oh, <laughs> some uh, energy just hangs there. Then you find out why. Empathic people have this same thing in a much larger scale. They'll walk into a movie theater, sit down next to somebody, and then move because that somebody is unbalanced. What is going on there? Is that telepathy? No. It's an example of the field. In other words, our emotions, our consciousnesses are always being broadcast, even on a very minuscule um, area, away. We are transmitters, just walking around. Now that is a, a way of explaining the field, perhaps in a, a very small way. But it is the way it works. So imagine that there is around this planet a quantum field, and even using the word field is improper because the field has a definition in 4D, and that's what you're used to. You, have, you talk about certain kinds of magnetic fields and all of these things. This is way beyond that. It, it is something that connects us all in an entanglement way so that when one person or a group of people has one kind of consciousness, it's possible that it's everywhere at the same time. All right, now we're just starting to discover how to use it, how to make it so that we could actually use it for peace on earth. How about that one? And that's the day we're talking to you. Is this possible? Can large groups of people affect other large groups of people? How about this? Can one person affect the many? We already know the many affect the one. We, we have think, we've seen that. We're, we're talking about something that's, that's much, much different. Let me give you an example that I had happened to me through Cryon many years ago. Cryon was in a channel, and he was talking to people about the future. And he said something, and it was recorded, and he was in Texas when he did it. And his words were this. 
you're going to get a new pope soon. And that pope is going to make the difference for its church. It's going to be a different kind of pope with a different attitude. Those were his words. Thirteen months later, we got a new pope. Now, if you just stop for a moment and say, what was happening there? Well, most esoteric people will say, well, that's Cryon talking about the future, telling the future. But there's a problem with that because Cryon has said this, no one knows the future because it's in our hands. In other words, humanity drives day by day what happens on this planet with free choice. We can change it in an instant. We can do whatever we want to it. There's no preset future. Not only that, Krein went on to say, this future in this new energy is not going to repeat itself like history has in its past. We're not going to then have a recurring pattern of world wars. That's not going to happen. And that is what we're also seeing now, a war that suddenly no one wants. The entire world has reacting to that. This is something like we have never seen before. What about this Pope incident? Well, here's what Krein later identified. He said it was in the field. What was happening at the Vatican at the moment that Krein talked about the new Pope? The Pope that was existing knew he was in trouble. Now, we don't have all the details. Someday we will whether it was mentally or physically, but he knew at that point in time and went to the, to the powers that be in the church and said, I cannot be a good pope and do my duty with what's going on in my body. And so they set up, the, the whole Vatican set up to make this shift and change without a pope dying to elect another one. That was going on when Cryon gave that information because, are you ready? It was in the field. Everything that happens in these levels, even the, the deepest secrets at some level, are in the field. Did you know, and Krein has said it, that all the inventions that we have seen so far in our lifetime, even before our lifetime, were in the field altogether. When one invention was there and they saw it worked, that it literally was in the field. And if you want to see this profoundly, in this country, the Wright brothers who flew the first powered flight, and you would say, well, they invented powered flight. It was all over the planet at the same time. The U.S. The, the US beat the French only by two weeks on that invention. If the Wright brothers had stalled their Kitty Hawk experiment, the French would have invented powered flight. It was the same with um, electricity, uh, radio. We find out later that it was given to this planet through humanity all at once. That's the field. How do you like it so far? So the Pope's prediction about having a new Pope was only available to cry on because it was in the field. 13 months after he said we would get a new pope that was different and would do things that were different, that's exactly what we got. I'll tell you a little bit about how this works so you get a, a little bit more, I would say, of a metaphor. If you take a hot bathtub, not a bathtub, bath, bath water in a bathtub, hot bath, let's say you draw the water, it's there, it's pure, it's warm, it's fresh, it's clean, and you take food dye, only a few drops of food dye, and you drop it into the bathtub. Do nothing else and come back. You've got a pink watered bathtub. The water's pink. Why? It diffused on all by itself. You didn't have a stick to stir it in there. That drop of water diffused into all of the molecules of the water in the bathtub. That's the field. That's the best metaphor I can give you. A multi-dimensional energy that is ready to have thought in it diffused. And it goes everywhere at the same time. This is actually beautiful. I am a fan 
my mentor, <laughs> Lynn McTaggart. She was one of the first to say, I'm going to show this is real. And she did. With Sippy's help also, it then got to be measured. But Lynn was working on this with her power of eight and many things. And that occurred to her and she acted on it. And I love that, that she was able to then prove something that seemed so strange to us all. If one group of people in one part of the earth started thinking something, and then you combined it perhaps with another group and another part of earth and another group, could it make an effect on humanity that weren't thinking about it? In other words, the one drop of dye would get the whole bathtub, pieces of parts of the molecule of water that were never thinking about being pink, got pink. Do you see what I'm saying? This has been proven in so many ways, in so many areas, even in a small areas, the heart math has proven about the, the coherence in a group. We did this even in our own meeting. So has Greg Braden. And that is you have coherence start with one or two people and you sit there and without doing anything at all through measurements, pretty soon the whole room is coherent. This is real, folks. This is an experiment today that we're going to do with exactly that thing that we're talking about, which is the field. Now, if you're interested in this, if you see that this particular thing that we're speaking about is not just a spiritual idea, but has validation, experiments before this, large groups, small groups, and you're seeing it's done with some of the protagonists, protagonists of this movie through music, through tones, what we're showing, it's a lot bigger than you think. A lot bigger. I want to wrap this up by giving you a question. Is it possible individually what we think, the kindness, the compassion that we have perhaps to each other, is it catchy? <laughs> With what you do as a one person, can that change others? It does. And that's been proven. What you do personally, independently, and how you think and act goes everywhere. If enough of us become compassionate and kind, in touch with others, wanting peace on the planet, that is exactly what goes out. And that goes out to the others perhaps who are not thinking about it, who then become ones who start thinking about it. You see how this is? This is what love is like as well. It can't contain itself in one little place. It spreads. When you're with loving people, you feel it. When you're with angry people, you feel it. Let's take what has now been proven and is scientific and use it to make this planet different. Together, we can change everything. Thank you for listening. Now you can, you can show it in, in real time. We can uh, drop uh, Michal Milgram's drop in the, in the water and turn everything <laughs> That's beautiful. As a kefranu, as a kefranu. As before that it began the day, the study of Professor Kroktov, a machshir that he wrote called Biowell, he will tell us what he wrote, but there is also a machshir that he wrote the study that he called Spotnik, פה במקום שאנחנו משדרים יש שני ספוטניקים כאלה, ספוטניק, ספוטניק, אחד בדובאי, אחד בארצות הברית, וכמה נוספים במדריד, ועוד עשרים בברזיל. Just one minute before I translate it. Okay. Uh, because until today, the field was something invisible, right? Yes, like exactly. Thousands of years people have been talking about it, they, they were calling it the one god, or whatever they were calling it, everybody could... talk about it, sense it, but no one could actually see it. But right now, with the new technology that is brought into us over here, we can actually see and measure the fields. We can measure our effect on the fields. It becomes physical, it becomes measurable. You Isn't can touch great? it. You can, you can really touch it. So, uh, before this experiment started, uh, Professor Kroktov 
uh, he measured with, with the device that he developed that calls BioWell. But there is also other measurement tools like Sputnik. Here there are two Sputniks that are measuring the field. There is one in Dubai and one in Pennsylvania, one in the United States, some other in Madrid, and 20 in Brazil. You should ask Professor Crockton how many degrees he have. And then, no, no experiment today because it's gonna take an hour. <laughs> Hello, good evening, how are you? Good evening. So you're absolutely right. What we do for the first time, maybe in, in time, we're measuring fields. Because we know it's possible to measure electromagnetic field. It's possible to measure uh, a ge a geomagnetic field, gravitational field. But before that, bioenergy field or biofield was impossible to measure. But we know that we are not just material beings, but we are spiritual beings. We are part of the universe and we are field parts. אז, אז, אז מה שבעצם אה, אה, פרופ, אה, פרופסור קרוקטוב אומר לנו זה שעד היום באמת לא היה אפשר לראות את השדה הזה, היה אפשר למדוד שדות אלקטרומגנטיים והיה אפשר למדוד אה, שדות גיאומגנטיים, אבל לא היה אפשר למדוד שדות ביו-אנרגטיים, זאת אומרת את השדות שלה, ש, שהופכים אותנו בעצם לאנושיים, והשדות האלה שאנחנו יכולים להרגיש אותם באינטואיציה שלנו, בנפש שלנו, אבל לא יכולנו למדוד אותם עד היום. היום אנחנו יכולים למדוד את השדות האלה, כי אנחנו לא רק... ישויות פיזיות, אנחנו ישויות רוחניות, ועכשיו גם אפשר לראות את זה ולמדוד את זה בכלים, באמצעות הכלים האלה. So our instruments based on quantum effects, because my first background was quantum physics, then biophysics, medicine, and it is, uh, we know the principle of this, so we stimulate activity of human body or environment with very short electromagnetic impulse, and we have a response in photons and electrons. המכשירים האלה מודדים את השדה הגוונטי ואת ההסתברויות הגוונטיות שיכולות לקרות בשדה על ידי זה שהם מפעילים פולסים חשמליים לגוף האנושי והם רואים את ההתפזרות של אלקטרונים במרחב הקוונטי, אני מקווה שתרגמתי את זה נכון. So, we take measurements of people just from fingers and we have this knowledge and a picture of energy field around the body, chakras, many different parameters, about 30, 40 parameters. That is why this system is quite widely used in medicine in many fields, like uh, analysis of cancer, analysis of uh, hypertension, of diabetes, and many, many analysis in different hospitals of the world. As much as the machines are doing, it is הם מדידה של ה... הם מדידה, מודד. באמצעות כף היד, הם מודדים את ה... את ה... את האורה, את העילה של הבן אדם, הם מודדים את השדות האלקטרומגנטיים שלו, והם מודדים את, בעצם את, ה... הצ'קרות. את הצ'קרות שלו. משתמשים בזה היום בכל מיני, בהמון בתי חולים בעולם, כדי למצוא כל מיני סוגים ולאבחן כל מיני סוגים של סרטן ושל מחלות ובעיות שונות. So our idea here at this event was to take measurement of 10 people. before the event, and we did it. And then after meditation, we'll repeat measurement and we'll see the effect of meditation on our energy field, on our chakras, on our stress level, and it will be possible to compare in computer. עשינו מדידות כבר לפני הניסוי, ואנחנו הולכים למדוד אחרי הניסוי את האפקט של המדיטציה שאנחנו עושים פה על השדה האנושי שלנו, על הצ'קרות שלנו, על השדה האנרגטי, על ההילה שלנו. על רמת האנרגיה. על רמת האנרגיה בגוף, ו, ובעצם לראות את ההשפעה של המדיטציה שאנחנו עושים גם על, הגוף, על הגופים של עשרה חבר'ה מכאן. But it's not only this. I have the sensors. and they are named Sputnik because they look like old Russian Sputnik. And the sensor I invented many years ago, um, and this allows to measure the energy of the environment. אז יש לו גם את הספוטניקים, ספוטניקים נקראים על שם על הספוטניק הרוסי, שזה כלי הרכב הראשון שטס לחלל, דרך אגב. נכון? נראה לי. והם מודדים את האנרגיה. מודדים את האנרגיה במרחב. Because very important for me to prove that with our consciousness 
with our mind, with our intention, we change the environment. ומה שהיה חשוב לפרופסור קרוקטוב להוכיח זה שבאמצעות התודעה שלנו, המוח שלנו והמחשבות שלנו, אנחנו יכולים להשפיע על הסביבה שלנו. זו, זו בעצם כל, ה, כל השליחות שלו, להוכיח שכל הכוונות שלנו הן אלה שיוצרות את המציאות. I did uh, measurements before the event with two Sputniks, with uh, mobile phone, with computer, and then I will make same during meditation. אז מה שהוא מדד את השדה ולקח את כל המדדים במכשירים השונים שלו לפני המדיטציה והוא הולך למדוד בזמן המדיטציה וגם אחרי. And we will be able to see effect of meditation, our collective meditation of several thousand people worldwide. On the environment. אז אנחנו נוכל לראות את, ה, את ההשפעה של המדיטציה שכולנו הולכים לעשות כאן ביחד, 7,000 אנשים מכל העולם, על הסביבה ועל העולם, וזה לא רק מדידות מכאן, יש גם מדידות בדובאי ומדידות בהרבה מקומות בעולם שמודדים בו זמנית מה שקורה כאן עכשיו, שזה ממש מרגש. So this way we can again and again demonstrate that our consciousness, our mind can really influence what's going on in the world. אז מה שאנחנו הולכים להראות באמת זה להוכיח שהתודעה שלנו וה, והמחשבה שלנו יכולה להשפיע על מה שקורה בעולם. So I will process all the data that we have here, and then other people will send data from different sensors from worldwide, because they will be using this in parallel with us. אז אנחנו הולכים לראות את ההשפעה גם כאן דרך הכלים פה במדיקל קר, וגם דרך הכלים שמודדים בכל המקומות בעולם. So let's see. What will be, but I have no doubts will have some effects. אז בואו נראה, ולפרופסור קוקטוב אין ספק שיהיה השפעה. Because it's not the first time when we do this type of experiments. כי זה לא פעם ראשונה שהוא עושה את הניסויים מהסוגים. And it's always successful. וזה תמיד תמיד מצליח. But let's see, let's see. אבל בואו נראה, ואנחנו מקווים. Thank you. Thank you very much. וואו, תשמע, אני חייבת להגיד לך שכל פעם, זו הפעם השביעית שלי כאן בניסוי הזה. וכל פעם שאני בניסוי הזה, אני כל כך, כל כך מתרגשת. אולי תתרגם, אז אני אגיד לך ממה. So, uh, it's uh, Michal, she's here for the seventh time, and every time she's very, very, very excited, and now she's going to tell us what she's excited about. <laughs> זה בדיוק כל המכשירים האלה. לוקחים אנשים שיושבים ועושים עבודה תודעתית, רוחנית, במשך שנים, וזה הופך אותם למשהו... מקובל, נורמטיבי. זאת אומרת, זה פותח את זה לסביבה כולה. So what Michal actually says is that this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, devices actually um, allows and give permission to all the weirdos that are meditating and doing spiritual work and inner work uh, to have recognition and not to be so weird because we can measure the effects. אז דן, אני יודעת שהדברים שגם אתה עושה בחיים שלך, גם קשורים לעבודה עם השדה, נכון? Yeah. כחלק מהעניין. So maybe you're going to explain a little bit about what you're doing and what the connection to the fields. Yeah, so my belief is, what, what I do for, 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 for my living and passion is I teach people how to heal themselves. Because I really, really believe that our bodies has a natural ability to heal itself. And we don't need... tools to, to, to show it. It happens when we cut ourselves and the body can heal. And uh, I've been teaching and experimenting of, uh, about what are the, the things that should happen in cases when the body cannot heal itself to make it heal itself again. And uh, what I've discovered in my research over my body when I, I suffered from an from a, a, a auto, autoimmune disease is that What actually was triggering the disease was emotional stress that I carried in my field or in my life. And uh, once I, I could address the, the root cause of the stress and, and release this, this trapped energy and change the energy in my field, wow. the, the next thing that happened is that my body healed totally from this condition. And I could never, I never seen like, uh, any symptoms 
in, in my body afterwards. So since then, in the past 12 years, I've been teaching and helping people to heal themselves and show them, show them the way, how we can do healing specifically, measurably, and uh, with tremendous and beautiful, beautiful results. And once we heal ourselves, we, we, we like this, this, this pink drop in the water, isn't it? Exactly. Can you translate? קחו לא צריך, קחו כוס מים למי שעוד לא שתה, קחו נשימה עמוקה, אנחנו ממש עוברים לניסוי עכשיו. Once again, it is so wonderful that our beautiful family of old souls are coming together on this particular day, September 21, looking at world peace together and having that as our intention and focus. We're going to hear a channel from Cryon in just a minute, but to help us prepare for that channel, I invite you to join me in a brief meditation. So with that, I invite you to close your eyes and allow your breathing to become slower so that your breath going in is for a count of perhaps four or five and your breath going out is a little longer, perhaps a count of six or seven. And as you slow your breathing, I remind you that this is a safe place that you are in. And I ask you to join me in a visualization, or perhaps you can just feel into it if you have trouble visualizing. In front of you, you are going to see a beautiful bubble of light. And this bubble of light that glows comes a little closer. You may even wish to put out your hand and have that bubble of light now rest itself into your hand. And within that bubble of light is the energy of peace. And we're now going to move that beautiful bubble of light containing the energy of peace into our heart and you may even wish to place your hand on your heart and feel, sense, imagine or visualize that bubble of light holding peace has now entered into your heart. It has become a part of your heart and as your heart breathes in and out with the breaths of your lungs. This bubble now becomes bigger. With each breath you take, the bubble is increasing in size. And as this energy of peace radiates out through your body, the bubble becomes so big that it is released from you and goes out into the field. And I invite you to contemplate right now how many of your brothers and sisters are sending out their bubbles of peace into the field. And I invite you to feel, sense, imagine or visualize these bubbles growing bigger and then merging together. And as these bubbles merge together, we create one enormous bubble of holding that peace energy that surrounds and blankets our family of humanity on our beautiful earth. And from this energetic posture of being wrapped in a bubble of peace, we welcome in the message of Cryon.
Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. It's a special message today. It's a message I would love to have everyone on this planet hear. For at some level, everyone is sensing it. There's something going on that has been predicted by the ancients. All over this world, for thousands of years, they have targeted a time of change. It responds to the stars in the sky, to the cosmos, to the wobble of the earth, whatever you want to call it. It's only a few years old, this event. They called it the precession of the equinoxes. We call it the shift of time where humanity starts to go into an energy that is different from any energy that has ever existed. For humans, for the planet, for animals, it doesn't matter. This is new. And this particular energy is different from any other energies that have ever been here. For it starts to have more light shine on the planet. Now that's a metaphor meaning a higher consciousness is beginning. And what that means to you, every one of you listening, is that there are things now available to you, both individually and in a group, that you have never had before. Whatever you think are your gifts, spiritual or not, are now able to be enhanced more than ever before. Look around you. Look around you. What's going on on the earth right now? Did you see? Did you see? It wasn't that many months ago that the old energy of decades ago, an attempt to revisit it, to pull the earth backwards, didn't work. In fact, the entire earth, most of it, objected immediately, said, no, that's not what we're going to do. Not this time. We're not going to repeat history. Not this time. That's new. There's something going on, as you want to say, that people, regular people all over the planet are feeling. Many years ago, I sat in that, the center of what I would call the situation in Israel in Jerusalem and I said this I said this is going to affect everyone here there'll come a day I said back then when the younger people not the elders would be in charge of both sides maybe three or four sides if you want to start identifying who's involved and they will look at one another and say what does history have anything to do with today? Can we put history aside and see what we have in common? And what you have in common is family, love, kindness, compassion. If you forget who did what to whom and when. And dear ones, that's one of the new tools. But that's not the, that's not the big news I'm going to give you. That's just something on its way to fruition. That is going to happen. I can promise you. It's already in the field. It's already happening. At some level, the populations who have not been trained to hate are starting to ask these questions. Why are we stuck in the past? Humanity is starting to ask the same question. Why do we weigh today against what happened before? I'm going to give you some news. What did you hear about God when you went to that, perhaps, which is the place of worship? It doesn't matter who your prophet is. It doesn't matter what the building represents or the name on it. Is it a mosque? Is it a synagogue? Is, is, is it a, a Catholic church? Is it, do you have pastors? And what? It doesn't matter. 
What did you hear about God? And one of the first things you're told is that you're made in his image. Who? Now, for those who are literal, you're going to say, well, that means God looks like a human. <laughs> Let me tell you, all spiritual information is given to you, dear human being, in metaphors. All of it. If you take a look at the words even of the prophets, many of them speak in stories and metaphors so that their teaching will be pure and ageless. And that was made in his image, means this, every single one, every human being was made in the image of the creator. And what is that image, dear one? It's love. Made in the image of love. Every single one of you has an eternal soul. And that's where the bubble comes in that you just heard about in meditation. Stay with me because I want to talk about what's at hand, what's happening right now that is, that is magnificent, that is different, that is beautiful, perhaps that you don't know about, but you're feeling it wherever you are, wherever you're laying or sitting. You need to hear this. The prophet Elijah went into the field where he ascended. And in this field, he was being watched by his student. And that student was writing down everything that happened to Elijah. Elijah has the distinction of being such a fine and great master that he even chose the time of his ascension. Elijah, in human form, walks into the field and the beginning of the ascension process began. And what was written down that happened to him is significant. He turned into a bubble of light right where he was, right where he stood. That essence of love of God was always there in him. That what made him a prophet. It was always there. And that bubble started to expand and expand. And the next thing you know, he started to ascend. And the metaphor of the chariot, the horses, it's all there. It all meant something else, dear ones. But you can't get over the one thing. While he was human, while he was on the ground, his bubble showed. And that was really one of the things that in his passing, in his transition, he wanted to show the entire planet. You, all of you, have that bubble here. Now, you don't have to go into a heavenly state to find that which is the love of the Creator. It's in you. It's now. It's in that soul you carry. And here is the best news I could ever give anyone today. This new energy on the planet right now, this energy allows you to actually develop what you saw Elijah do in his ascension status. You start to touch the face of God. You can start enhancing that bubble. And when you do, all manner of things start to happen. Infused in you seemingly from that soul that you carry with you are things that were always there, but that now are starting to awaken and develop and activate healing, love, compassion, joy, the wanting desire of loving each other, of being peaceful with each other, hand in hand, a world starting to awaken to a better time. To work together to say, what can we do that's different in these years that our ancestors never were able to do? The earth is not getting worse, dear ones. The earth is being flooded with light. And in that, the dark things that were always there, they begin to show. Why? So that you, in your enlightened, loving state, can deal with them finally. Deal with them in compassion, finally. 
So this is a world that turns into a light you've never seen before. What about you personally? What happens then? Are there any masters on this planet who you saw that were able to heal others? That was something we saw that was perhaps you'd say was 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 a miracle was divine and only those who are of a of a higher spiritual nature can do it. That's not that's not even begins to be true. Dear ones, anyone can do it. That was the message. All the masters were human before they went away before they ascended and all of them showed you one thing. All humanity can heal. What are you doing right now? What's bothering you right now? Are you aware that you can reach out and touch that beautiful love that is yours and always has been that when infused in your body starts to go and attack the diseases that starts to affect the joy? You have a reason to live if it's not just to love God or love yourself. Even if you're alone, you're never alone. There are so much activity around you. In what we call the guides and the angels that you cannot see, the multidimensional ones that perhaps you say are in the ethers. They've always been with you and they've always been asking, asking, asking. Perhaps you'd like to see us sometime. Perhaps you'd like to let us heal you sometime. This is now. It's always been available, but now it starts to come like the crops, perhaps start to harvest because the seeds have been planted. This is the age of the harvesting of the soul energy of ascension. This is it. You are here at a special time where your souls begin to touch each other because the bubbles are so big and all of you seem to be swimming perhaps in a pool of love of compassion of healing, of understanding. How many of you can project this to a future earth where there are no barriers of hate, where you can say the past was the past and that was an old energy where all of us did things to each other which were unconscionable, but today <laughs> we feel differently because today we are more mature. We are able to love and not think about what happened in the past. We're able to do things we were never able to do before. Our children are being taught love and kindness and not history. Our children are being taught the potentials of what they can do. And the hospitals are starting to have fewer and fewer patients. And people are living longer because disease will not attack a sacred vessel. Did you know that you have vibration that is sensed in a quantum way in your body and many negative things, viruses, diseases cannot even begin to get in. What are you, what are you experiencing right now? How would you like to have disease just simply leave because there's no room for them. It cannot exist in a vessel that is packed with love and hearing the music perhaps of the beyond or heaven or whatever you think is out there that comes to you and is singing in your ear this beautiful song of magnificence of your soul. And this is where humanity is going eventually, dear ones. And I'll tell you, this has happened on other planets and it's happening here. You are at the cusp of it, the beginning of it. So you may not see the magnificence of it. Instead, what you're seeing are things happening on the earth. Hmm. When light starts to occur, the dark things, they scramble, they scream, they fight. And in the process, more light starts to come in. Humanity is changing. You are changing. Souls are starting to touch each other in ways they never have before. Lineages are starting to see what they have in common and not what history gave them. Dear ones, 
I say it again. In the most troubled spots of the world, expect the unexpected. In the hospitals all over the world, expect the unexpected. Where light starts to make a difference in health, longevity, peace, and starts to redefine humanity and human nature. That is what is happening today. Can you feel that? That's the best news I could ever give you. An ascending human race, very slowly, these are the times. They've never occurred before. Can you feel it? Can you sense this? Can you know the magnificence of God that is in you? It doesn't matter who your masters were. We're talking about the creative source energy, that which is the beauty, the magnificence, the glory that is in your soul, which is now being passed to you while you're alive on this earth. Arise, dear humans, and know that you are God. I am crying in love with humanity. And so it is. Lee Carroll, he said that once you drop a drop of pink uh, color into a bath of water, the, all the water becomes pink. And right now, when you do it alone, you drop a small, a small drop. What we did right now, like with thousands of people from all around the, from all around the world, we dropped this huge, this huge, uh, this huge drop of, uh, of beautiful energy. עכשיו הם כבר כולם יודעים שהמדיטציה בעצם הוקלטה מראש. Yes. והיא לא קרתה בזמן לייב, אבל אנחנו יודעים גם שאין כזה דבר מרחק וזמן, גם לי קרול דיבר על זה כרגע. ואני יכולה להגיד לך שניצלנו את העובדה. Right now we, we all know that this meditation was pre-recorded and uh, we are going to use this fact uh, and uh, what we did with this fact. Ah. שלחנו לג'ון סטוארט ריד. אתה לא איתנו, ב... היית כאן עד עכשיו, אבל הוא אחד האנשים היותר חמודים שאתה עומד לפגוש. Yeah. הוא נמצא, הוא מומחה האקוסטיקה שלנו, והוא קיבל מאיתנו את הפסקול המוקלט של בעצם, של, ה... של התהליך הזה, של התקשור הזה, וכמו תמיד, הוא מצא הרבה דברים מעניינים. So Michal said uh, that John Stuart Reed, hi John, that you are one hi. of the cutest people <laughs> that we'll have the chance to meet and you are our acoustics specialist and uh, we present you the, the audio file of uh, the meditation and uh, Michal told me that you find some interesting stuff, didn't you? I did indeed and thank you for that lovely introduction. You know, Lee, Lee Carroll Cryon was saying basically that uh, there is a bubble of energy and this is certainly true in terms of the acoustic energy. Whenever we speak, whenever we sing, uh, there's a bubble of energy that actually emits from our mouth and indeed from our nose. What the Cymoscope instrument does is to show us a cross section through that bubble. When uh, C.P. Raz contacted me and said, would we like to be part of this present experiment with Lee Carroll stroke cryon? The immediate thought that came to me was, well, yes, of course, and wonderful. So uh, CP did kindly send me the pre-recording and I listened to it very carefully. And by the way, I was very moved by it as I'm sure all of you have been uh, today. But in listening to it, the word that really leapt out to me was the word love. And if you listen to it again, you'll find that he actually says that word seven times. And so I thought, well, this is an ideal opportunity to image that word. So um, I know that uh, CP can show this composite graphic that I created here. Now, so there you see seven different cymoglyphs. And the first one that says love one, well, it's pretty incoherent, actually. I mean, it's, it's a little bit skewed. It's not very symmetrical. And yet, literally, 
This is the uh, first enunciation of Lee uh, speaking that word love. And I tried many times to make it look a little prettier, but nothing that I did would actually change that pattern. It was essentially, that was the image. And then when he said it a second time, you have to remember here, by the way, that every time someone speaks a word, they can give it a downward uh, cadence or they can give it an upward cadence. You know, you can change the inflection, in other words, in your voice. And indeed, every time that Lee spoke uh, that word love, there was a difference in the inflection. And certainly it's true that that inflection in the sound will create a different pattern uh, as you see it here. But, you know, what I was mainly interested in was not the cadence or not the uh, general uh, aspect of the sound of the word, but the beauty or lack of that it would create. So what you're seeing here as you go through them is more and more coherence, greater and greater coherence, right through to love four, which is actually starting to look really uh, very beautiful indeed. And then love five, love six, and finally love seven is very, very symmetrical indeed. And I thought, you know, it would be interesting for you all to see a video where we actually compare at least two of the cymoglyphs in dynamic mode, because, you know, our eyes can see far more in a video than we can in a still image, in this case, still cymoglyphs. So if you'd like to play the video now, we're going to see Love 4 and Love 7 made visible in real time by the Cymoscope instrument. Now, 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 now. So that's the fourth time. And you see now, it's not very coherent. Now, and now, now we're, here, we're seeing now, it for the seventh now. time. And there you see very beautiful coherence right at the end. So you might wonder, well, what does this all mean? How is it that every time that Lee spoke, there was an improvement in the general coherence of that word love? Well, of course, the, the word isn't, it's not just a question of uh, the cadence of the word or the general enunciation. There's also holographic data embedded in that as part of the holographic data of the field. And I believe that that's what we're actually seeing here with the cymoscope instrument. In other words, a general improvement in the coherence as a consequence of the general improvement in the field, even though that was a pre-recorded uh, interview with Lee Carroll and Cryon, we still are seeing this general improvement in coherence in the field. And I'm fascinated by that. It was surprising again, you know, even for me, seeing cymoglyphs almost every day here in the lab. So that's what I'd like, that's what I wanted to share with you all today. Thank you so much for, for your time. Thank you uh, for your experiment and uh, for sharing us with these beautiful visuals, beautiful uh, semantics and uh, the, your work with the cymoscope. And uh, it looks beautiful and uh, very, very exciting. John Tiber on the way that he works with a field called Kimatica. What he does is he says that every image that we see is going to be a shape and there is a picture that shows the shape of this shape. And what he sees is that in the last seven years, שבעת המילים, הפעמים שקרא, ש, שלי קרול אמר את המילה אהבה, הוא מדל את שבעת הפעמים וראו איך במילה הראשונה הצורה הייתה פחות מאורגנת ופחות מסודרת ופחות מסונכרנת, במילה השביעית זה כבר היה ממש נראה מושלם ויפה מאוד, מדהים. שזה מראה את השינוי בשדה. מדהים. Our dearest Krishna, hello, how are you? And, and, my, 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 we, I shall infuse this one simple eternal vibration which encompasses we are that one sphere and within this grand membrane of plasma we all thrive that is the you're essence in, you're in mexico now i'm in new mexico yes what are you doing there at at what 7 200 feet altitude 
Okay, wow. Can you explain us what you are uh, measure today? So I have not fully analyzed it yet because it's still running. Okay. See, it's still running, but as John shared earlier, you know, with the, uh, because these such experiments that we have been conducting, I would say, I would that, say that it would it, lead back to 2002 uh, when Constantine used to come to Santa Fe. And in Santa Fe, we used to have annual conferences on science and consciousness that went on for five days. So during one of such evenings, there we were all gathered inside the lobby of the hotel, Gary Schwartz, Lynn McTaggart, Constantine, Bill Tiller, Dean Radin, uh, Bernie Williams, all of us gathered together addressing ultimately a question, you know, that when we reference a question, we ask that question that is already guided towards creating waves and waves of coherence. We can speak about it now very, very, not just profoundly, but it is a matter of fact. And the objective here was how do we pair our measurement systems so that we would be able to observe the ability, the capacity of the human neurophysiology transmitting all these grand brain waves across that is merged into this one, which is what we call the field itself, the one field, which is Akash, Prithvi, Vayu. These are all terms that are conveyed inside the depths of the Vedic sciences. And they embody each and every one because there is no one that is separate. And so our experiments began. We had Dr. Rustam Roy at, at, uh, universe, at Penn State University using a Raman spectroscope. Then we had Gary Schwartz in his Laboratory of Advanced Human Consciousness Studies uh, using GDV. So like that, here I am in Taos doing such measurements. So then we collated such data and these were all initiatives that I would give credence to the great spirit, ultimately the great intelligence, utilizing us in very guided and purposeful ways. And when I say that using guided and purposeful ways, if we do not set the intention to ask the ultimate, who am I and guide me to live my most vibrant and highest purpose for having brought me here. <laughs> I mean, that, that is fundamental. The rest it is all detail. See, and that capacity of detail is as a, a field being, his name was Swami Vivekananda, he shared. He said, if you take a straight line and you project it infinitely, it will come back to its starting point. We know the source from where we've come. A journey is right back to source. What's required of us is implicit, focused, dedicated work. Travel in peace and brilliance, which is a luminous quality which integrates a sloka, a phrase in the Chandogya Upanishad that conveys, there is a light that shines brighter than all the earth, than all the stars and all the heavens. And that's the light that shines in the diamond that resides in the lotus of the heart. Hmm. Wow. Beautiful. That is our source. And, and what dear Constantine being inspired and guided towards incorporating of such non-linear parameters today, we bring it back to the field in which we are living in, if we call it the four dimensions. So, so is our enveloped 
where this thousand petal lotus which shines is to receive such information that th then there is nothing to do. So entropy, the word entropy, which is degree of chaos, will be transformed to neg entropy, which is creating a seamless interface in life. And all this, what is the most abundant substance of all? Is water. Water is the field. And we are all embodied inside of this, right from a single cell, where we all started in the grand bubble of the amniotic fluid. Well, How that elegant, is isn't it? That, that is so what we measure. And that is what we are measuring. And that is what inspired dear Constantine. It is not just in this lifetime. He has carried this with him through lifetimes. Thank you so much, Krishna, for sharing that and reminding us what's really, really important in what we're doing, and what is the true essence of why we are doing it and what we are doing here. So thank you so much. Uh, and we are uh, really, really uh, thrilled to hear from uh, what you have revealed uh, and the results of today. Yeah, the results of the of your measurements. Oh. Also. Thank you very much. Thank you and so much, Krishna. Ma, to all. Ma, back to you. Back to you. Thank you. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Kind person with an open heart, enlightened heart, and very very sharp mind. <laughs> what do you need, Elson? You know, in life. Thank you Thank so much. You. אז אתה רואה איך זה עובד? כל אחד כאן יותר מהמם מהשני. מהמם מהשני. וחמוד גם. ככה זה אנשים שציפי מושכת סביבה. מה זה אומר עלינו? איזה כיף. קצת תתרגם את מה ששמענו עד עכשיו, את מה שקרישנה אמר. אז קרישנה דיבר על זה כשיש את כל המגדות ואת כל הדברים, אבל מה שבאמת באמת חשוב... זה המהות והמקור של הדברים. Yeah. והוא דיבר, הוא, הוא, הוא ציטט משפט מהוודות, מהוודות ההודיות, שדיבר על האור שנמצא בתוך היהלום, שזה אותו אור שמוקרן מהלוטוס, שאותו אנחנו יכולים למצוא בתוך הלב שלנו. מדהים. והוא אמר, הוא דיבר על אנתרופיה, שזה בעצם כאוס, ועל החוק של כאוס, ואיך אנחנו יכולים להיות במקום ש... הכאוס הופך להיות משהו שהוא אה, בסנכרון בתוך החיים שלנו, וככה אנחנו יוצרים יותר סדר, יותר הרמוניה, יותר קוהרנטיות, אה, וזה העיקר. דובאי. כיף, כיף, כיף. הלו, דובאי, דוקטור מוחמד ריפס, how are you? הלו, הלו, היי, אביבון. This is uh, Dr. Mohamed Ripas yeah, here yeah. from Dubai. Yeah, nice to meet you. So we heard that you uh, nice initiated the Sputnik over there in Dubai, didn't you? Yes, yes, yes. We have been with uh, Tsipi also for a long time. We have been doing the experiments one by one. Each time we see different, different variations in the results also. So this time also it is a little much more different. Like we have been with uh, all these holistic kind of activities, even with the body. I'm a medical doctor. So usually, even with the body, we consider everything like holistic. We don't divide each part of the body as different entities. We consider the body as together. Even if somebody comes with a cough problem, we try to track it back and find out something problematic in the digestive system. So that's how we work. We work with holistic approach. So the same thing happens in our experiment also, as far as I know. We are like 7,000 people around the world with one intention. I'm also coming back to the same word that Dr. Korotkov and Dr. Krishna all of them mentioned, the word intention. Uh, we have a, a saying also in India, we say like, if you have the proper intention, the whole world will work out itself to make it a success. Here, if we are people like 7,000 people with the same intention from inside to bring the same goal, it will be more successful. So in the experiment also, we see something more similar to it. Like for example, if everyone has the same intention and we are achieving a goal, it means one activity is all going to a single point. So that single point, there'll be an energy accumulation. That's what we see. In most of the scans that we do also, it happens the same. 
if everyone around the world having the same intention get accumulated, it will intensify the area where you have uh, the accumulation. So the intensity will increase and increase. I have shared a slide. See, over here, you can see the last two figures in which the area deviation is there and the entropy area. So these two areas are the things that we can see too much of difference. The entropy, which means the energy which can be converted into a physical form. You can see that in the beginning, it was on the lower side. Gradually, with the respect to, with respect to the meditation time, it increased and there was a lot of fluctuation up and down, up and down, which usually doesn't come with the entropy. So if you are usually uh, switching on the system, you won't see too much of variation in the entropy. But this variation is like too much. And during the uh, experiment, it was going higher and higher. Then it became stabilized. Then while the experiment ended, it went back. The same with the area deviation and the entropy. If uh, Dr. Korotkov can see the experiment, he will be the best person to explain this even further. So I would like to again come back to the same thing like the intention. Uh, let's make the intention more uh, more clear and more um, what to say what more approachable to the people. So everyone will work to the same goal to achieve the same thing. I know Sipi and the team has been working with the same one field from long time. Uh, hope we all reach the point that we need soon soon as possible. And uh, regarding the science and methodologies that we uh, do, Sputnik is one of the methods that we do. And there are the life expert, I someone with the life ex uh, in your team for the research purpose. There are still more methodologies that the Russians actually are developing, uh, which is more uh, actually coming from the base of um, ancient Indian systems and ancient uh, Chinese systems. So all these are the systems where uh, we can understand there is the connection between the energy and the body. Though we have a lot of uh, technologies now, we still limit a lot of uh, uh, digitalization in the form of energy. I hope in the next decade, we will reach a huge goal. Hope Krishna and all will be uh, very good support to it. They have dedicated their life for it, Dr. Korotko, Dr. Krishnano. Anyway, Hello. thank you. Yeah, thank and you so much. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank again. you. Thank you from my heart. And thank you. Go to Dubai. We're going to come soon uh, to visit you. Inshallah, we'll see you soon. Dr. Muhammad Ripas basically saw the results of meditation. He said that in the beginning of the meditation, we can do better in the next time, in a better way, to achieve the goals we are doing. אז יש לו גם ביקורת עליו. יש לו גם נקודות לשיפור, ואני אוהב את זה. מצוין. אתה יודע, זה נחמד נורא, כל החבר'ה שם בחו"ל, אבל יש לנו גם נציגות שלנו, משמעותית, מכובדת. ברור. ונמצא אצלנו כאן הנציג של מכון מדע ותודעה, חגי. איפה חגי? פה, 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 מאחוריכם. היי, חגי, מה שלומך? אהלן. We have a representative of the Institute of Science and Consciousness, חגי. that is going to tell us about his measurements. Hi. קודם כל, שלום לכולם, ערב טוב. אני פה מייצג את המכון למדע ותודעה. המכון באמת בוחן הרבה מאוד חוקרים בתחום התודעה, ואנחנו חוקרים כל מיני ניסויים, וגם משתפים פעולה עם הניסוי שהתרחש פה היום, ועוד הניסויים שציפי מובילה. מה שאנחנו בעצם בדקנו עם מכשיר תדרים שנמצא פה לידי, ה-Life Expert, Uh, בעצם אנחנו uh, מודדים לפני ואחרי ובעצם משווים האם היה איזשהו שינוי בתדרים, בתדרים בכל האיברים שנמצאים uh, בגוף uh, לפני ואחרי. אז הייתה לנו פה uh, מתנדבת uh, uh, נועה, לא, לא מכיר אותה, לא יודע עליה פרטים. אחד הדברים שככה uh, עלו זה ש... ראינו פעילות, uh, אני ראיתי פה uh, פעילות... Uh, ברחם, פעילות אקטיבית ברחם, ומסתבר שאחרי זה שאלתי אותה, כי בדרך כלל פעילות כזאת נובעת 
מחזור או משהו בסגנון הזה, אז שאלתי אותה אם היא בתקופת מחזור, והיא אמרה לי שלא, שהיא עוברת טיפול והיא מחלימה מסרטן שהתחיל ברחם ועוברת איזשהו טיפול, אז, אז אנחנו ראינו את זה ממש פה במכשירים. אנחנו רואים גם כן שיפור בהיפופיזה, זאת אומרת, לפני הניסוי היה פעילות אקטיבית, זאת אומרת, היא כנראה... חשבה, או הרבה היה שם מחשבות, והדבר הזה נרגע, וגם אנרגטית אנחנו רואים שיפור. מעבר למדידה שעשינו פה בלייב, אז אנחנו עשינו גם עוד עשרים חוקרים ברחבי הארץ, עשו בדיוק את אותה מדידה, לפני ואחרי, על מישהו שצפה בניסוי, ואנחנו באמת נאסוף את הנתונים האלה, ובאמת נראה האם אותם שינויים שאנחנו ראינו פה, אז גם מתבטאים אצל אנשים אחרים, אז תודה רבה. They are experimenting with a woman that developed cancer and they could see how the measurements change during the experiment. עכשיו נמצאת איתנו דוקטור ענת ברנע. דוקטור ענת ברנע היא נירופיזיולוגית שהיא חוקרת ומלמדת בתחום הפעילות המוחית החשמלית כבר יותר מ-35 שנה. ענת נמצאת כאן יחד עם השותפה שלה, שלי יונגמן, בעלת תואר שני בפסיכולוגיה וחינוך, והם עדדו שני מוחות. דוקטור ענת ברנע, היא נוירופיזיולוגיסט, והיא תלמדת בפעילות של EEG, Brain Electrical Activity, כבר 35 שנה. ענת היא פה עם הפרטנר, שלי. שלי יוגמן, שהיא איזה מאסטר דגריז עם פסיכולוגי ואדיוקיישן, והם מזהו שתי ברעים. אנחנו בדקנו EEG, שזו הפעילות החשמלית המוחית. היו שינויים משמעותיים, עלייה בגלי אלפא, כשהוא נכנס למדיטציה, לעומת שהוא סתם עצם עיניים ולא היה במדיטציה. She still need to analyze the data, but for what she could see from the reading of Asaf's Uh, um, uh, EEG, she could see that uh, his brain moved more in, into alpha state. Of course, it happened uh, during the meditation, and she still needs to analyze the data. So I was able to process our data, because it's all here, and it's very fast for me. And first of all, I uh, have two sensors, two Sputnik sensors. Both sensors demonstrated very similar results. In both cases, we had decrease of entropy, uh, 11% on one sensor, 24% on another sensor. Wow. So they are a little bit different, but still it's very big. And we have decrease of uh, en energy in the room, uh, about uh, 13, uh, from 10 to 13%. Significant results, uh, 10-11%, uh, because it shows us germanization of the place, of the energy of the place. השפעה משמעותית מאוד על המרחב, גם על המרחב האנרגטי, וזה נתונים משמעותיים מאוד שממש אפשר לראות אותם על השדה, בזכות המדיטציה שעשינו פה כולנו ביחד. No, it's because of me. I'm sure. For people it was interesting result. Because I didn't see big change in people, but all the people except one person increased level of stress. בנתונים שהוא מדד אצל בני האדם, אצל כל האנשים חוץ מבן אדם אחד הייתה עלייה ברמת הסטרס. It means attention, very deep attention to what was going on, because this, uh, in reality we didn't have meditation process. We have the process of listening of this uh, wonderful uh, person, and uh, it was very deep attention to what he was saying. הוא מסביר את רמת הסטרס הגבוהה שעלתה, כי הוא אומר שפשוט עלתה רמת תשומת הלב. כי זה היה לא מדיטציה קלאסית, זה היה יותר מצב לא מדיטטיבי, יותר מצב של הקשבה לדברים ש... שנאמרו על ידי אותו בן אדם. We, Carol, attracted his attention to him, and all people, from one hand, they were very concentrated, very centered, that's why they increased their level of stress, but their overall concentration decreased 
the level of entropy in the room. Last but not least is Michal Schraga. She's the vice president of the integrative project of medical care. In medical care, by the way, they got a recognition from HeartMath Institute to work with the inner balance device. אוקיי, okay, אז אנחנו כאן במדיקל קר עברנו הסמכה על ידי מכון מחקר מאוד ידוע בארצות הברית בשם הארטמאט ואנחנו בעצם מודדים את ה-HRV שזה את המרווחים שבין פעימות הלב שהם בעצם המדד של הקוהרנטיות שלנו זאת אומרת עד כמה אני בחוסן עד כמה יש בגוף הלימה בין כל המדדים הרגשיים המנטליים הפיזיים והרוחניים אנחנו בעצם מודדים ארבעה דברים, יש לנו מכשיר שנקרא inner balance, כל המשתתפים היום בניסוי בעצם נבדקו לפני כן ובמהלך המדיטציה. מה שאנחנו יכולים כאן לראות בצורה מובהקת, התוצאות בידיי, זה שבעצם למרבית האנשים הקוהרנטיות עלתה, זאת אומרת המדד של החוסן עלה וה-HRV, המרווחים שבין פעימות הלב, נכנסו לאיזושהי צורה מסודרת והרמונית, שמראה בעצם על קוהרנטיות גבוהה מלבד אדם אחד שהייתה לו ירידה קלה, שכל, כל הנבדקים בעצם הראו שהקוהרנטיות שלהם עלתה. זאת אומרת שבעצם הניסוי מראה שבזמן המדיטציה ובזמן תשומת הלב לדברים של איקריון, בעצם נכנסה איזושהי הרמוניה חדשה לתוך הגוף. The device measures, it measures four aspects of, uh, of human coherence, co resilience. of resilience and coherence, and uh, it measures arch HRV, which is the space between one heartbeat to the, the second heartbeat, and she could see in the most, almost uh, all the, the participants that the coherence level went up, and, and the harmony level got better, the resilience uh, was better, except of one person, which it came down a little bit. Thank you so much. Incredible. All the results of these results, we will be able to focus on all the places in the world. We can find them also in our website, and we will also do a review about all the results of these results, so that all the things that we have today, anyone who wants to see the results of these results, so yeah, all the all the all the the, the data and all the uh, the experiments and and what we, the what we're going to reveal are going to uh, be produced in the website and also we're going to create an event that we are going to share all the data and all this interesting, super interesting information of how this meditation affected so many areas and fields of the field. Before we finish and go אני רק רוצה לומר שערב כזה יכול להתקיים רק בזכות התורמים הנדיבים שלנו. ואני רוצה להודות למכון מדע ותודעה ולחברת נוטרדי, שזה במקרה חבר טוב שלי, שזה כיף שהוא חלק מזה, שתרמו ונתנו חסות לשידור הזה, כדי שנוכל להמשיך לעשות את האירועים האלה בחינם ולא לגבות כסף מהצופים שלנו, אנחנו תמיד נשמח. Uh, לעוד חסויות, אם אתם מכירים אנשים, אם אתם מכירים, אם אתם בעצמכם, אנשים שהם בעלי עניין ורוצים לתת חסות לאירוע שכזה, אנחנו ממש נשמח שתהיו חלק מזה. We want to thank the, the Institute of Science and Consciousness that helped sponsoring this event and also a Nutridy company. וזה הזמן להגיד תודה על הערב הזה. קודם כל תודה לציפי רזה על הסרט yes, הזה. Yes, totally. Thank you so much for Sipi Raz to create this movie and this movement. Toda raba 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 le Monica Morani ve le Lee Carroll kamuvan. Thanks so much for Monica Morani and Lee Carroll. Le Professor Kroktov ayakar. Shigia yashar mi Barcelona and tomorrow he fly back to Madrid. To a big conference, right? Yes, exactly. And thank you to Shaul Ipaz and to Michal. And thank you to Shaul Ipaz and Michal Shraga that opened the doors and the hearts for, for this event and for us. And thank you to their team, to their employees, who have been able to and 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 have been able to Stuart, Reed, thank you. Krishna, Krishna what's happened to me? Thank you, Dr. Muhammad. We pass. Thank you, Dr. Chagai Folkman. Thank you, Dr. Anad Gilboa and Shelly Youngman. Toda anakit anakit. 
לחבר המהמם שלי, יניר שביט וחברת נוטר, נוטרדיד, על, ה, על, ה, ועל התרומה ולמכון למדע uh, ותודעה שנתנו את החסות לאירוע. תודה רבה לך, יניר שביט, ולנוטרדיד קומפני, ולאינסטיטוט של סייאנס וקונצ'סנס, שפונסר את האירוע. תודה לדבורה שרר על יחסי הציבור, לג'ו רובי שאחראית על השיווק מהצד שלי, קרול. And so thank Dvora Scherer for the uh, public relations and Joe Werby that uh, doing the marketing for, uh, for Lee Carroll. And also... Wait a minute, thank you to Itamar for all that is happening here, for the fact that this is so unbelievable to be able to fight on so many countries at the time, so thank you very much for all this story. Thanks Itamar for all the help. ואני רוצה להודות לצוות המיוחד הזה, הצוות של השדה האחד, לאנה, לדנה שישבה בבית וענתה לכל הזומים, לענת, איפה ענת המהממת הזאת? יש, לענת, לחגי, ותודה, תודה לך, דן. בכיף. היית מורה נהדרת. הייתה לי נהדרת הנוכחות הזאתי. איזה כיף. תודה רבה לך, מיכל. תודה, thank you. thank you. All of you, it was a pleasure to be here this evening. Nipagesh Bekarov, Basirto, Ba Erua Shela Totsaot, Laila Tov Lekulam from Israel. We will meet next on the, on the results event, uh, sharing the, the, the results and uh, good night from Israel. Bye-bye, good night. Bye-bye.